Hey guys, how's it going? It's 8-Bit Eric. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, consider hitting that subscribe button so you won't miss any kind of uploads that I have. I like to cover a lot of games here. In fact, today's game we're going to talk about is an indie game by the name of Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan. Now, this is a, another game in the Sydney Hunter series. If, if you're not familiar with it, Collector Vision Games, this is basically their mascot. He's been in a lot of different games from like the Wii U and even the Master System. And now the latest installment is on the Nintendo Switch. He's in the vein of Indiana Jones. He's a quirky little cartoony character that has to make his way through different levels filled with your, you know, garden variety Indiana Jones obstacles. So Sydney Hunter and Curse of the Mayan is not my first rodeo with this franchise. I covered the Wii U game and I rather much enjoyed it. Now, full disclosure, my friend Gamester81 is a part of Collector Vision Games, which is the company that developed this game. And don't think of this as a shill. This is more of like me supporting and congratulating my friend on releasing this game for the Nintendo Switch. I've been excited about it. I've been telling him for years when it comes out on Switch, I want to check it out. And it's finally here and I wanted to check it out. So if that's a crime, sue me. So yeah, Sydney Hunter, The Curse of the Mayan. It's your standard platforming game. If you've played a retro style platformer that basically has all these elements, then you've played Sydney Hunter. But I do like the quirkiness and the way that the graphics are presented. Sure, it's played out. Indie games use this 8-bit, 16-bit retro style graphics all the time to the point where it's almost overdone. But I will say if Sydney Hunter was made in any kind of other graphical style, it just wouldn't feel the same in my opinion. I think the charm and the je ne sais quoi of this title being an 8-bit, 16-bit type of hybrid is what really makes it enjoyable. It has that real old school charm and feel to it. Uh, I, I just, I wouldn't want to play it if it was 3D polygons or cell shaded or any kind of like handwritten or hand drawn type of artwork. I think it needed to be an 8-bit, 16-bit sprite. And I've seen a lot of comparisons to other titles like Shovel Knight and different other indie titles that use this type of graphical art style saying, you know, for the past five years it's kind of been outdone that's a valid criticism or whatever but again in my opinion i think that sydney hunter looks and feels just right the way it is if it's not broken don't fix it and that's the appeal and that's that's the general idea with like collector vision games they're, they're a whole bunch of like old school gamers why would you not pay homage to like games that you enjoyed playing? So, you know, it has a little bit of everything in this game, actually. It's it's not only a platforming game, but there are some light Metroid elements to it as well. And even Mega Man with certain obstacles and stuff in the stage. So yeah, again, garden variety obstacles in this game. You got your snakes, you got your scorpions, you got your bees, you got your pits with fire, spikes, you got disappearing blocks, you got moving platforms, you have swimming, Things like that. But along the way, as you complete the levels, you earn different items and different weapons, different ways to progress to certain areas of the temple, which you're stuck in a temple. That's the main basic of the game. You're in a temple. You have to go from gate to gate. Each little like temple area has a certain amount of crystal skulls that you need to open and access it. So you each level, you try to find all the hidden crystal skulls. There's usually about 10 in each one. And then you go back to the main hub and you open up a new area you could encounter, but there are doors and stuff that aren't accessible. So the Metroid element is you might have to backtrack to reach certain areas that you couldn't get previously until you got a certain item that allows you to break down certain barricades or blocks, or you get a weapon like a boomerang or a spear that allows you to basically defeat certain enemies easier. So the general idea is you're in a big temple hub going from world to world, finding crystal skulls, exploring and stuff so there's a lot of like small little nods to like metroid mega man a lot of the stages and the stage designs with like the ladders and the disappearing blocks and the, the platform elements it reminded me a little bit of that too so this is kind of like a love letter to retro games and i think they actually did a real good job of doing it that the game feels solid enough you know the jumping mechanics and everything sydney hunter just feels great to control one thing that i'm really picky on when it comes to platforming games is if the characters feel too light or too slippery sydney hunter kind of feels like he's a little chubby type of cute little short guy running around when you're actually moving around he doesn't move too fast there is no run button so he he feels 
like he looks, basically. He's a quirky little cute little character that needs to be in this graphical art style. If it was any other way, it just would not work, in my opinion, again, to emphasize that. The soundtrack, chiptune music, but it gets catchy. It gets stuck in your head a little bit after playing it and whatever. And there's definitely a high degree of challenge with Sydney Hunter especially in the boss fights. <laughs> I died so many times, but there are shops you can earn, you know, points or money, currency by collecting treasures as you play. And then you can find certain shops like in the, the temple, there's two of them. You can buy more health, you can buy potions, you can buy keys, because a lot of the levels have keys and areas that you have to access. You have to find like the hidden keys to proceed. There's different colors of keys, stuff like that. So you can earn enough treasure to be able to kind of like assist your way. But the game does have a high degree of retro challenge that makes it feel like this was something that could have possibly been on the NES or the Super Nintendo back in the day. Because you will die a lot. I know I did. I ain't that great at games. I think I suck at games. But <laughs> some of those boss fights got rather intense. The boss fights do um, do catch my attention because usually it's big, huge, gigantic sprites that have a variety of different attacks and stuff. And as you progress again, just like any kind of generic platforming game, you get access to more areas. You basically the goal is to get like all that amulet and statues completed, and then you make your way out. So. Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mine. Again, I, I've been following the Sydney Hunter, Sydney Hunter series since it was on other consoles. This is like a franchise that they have. This is like Collector Vision Games mascot. So this is their Mario, this is their Sonic. And I think with each iteration, each different game that comes out, it gets more and more better, more expansive. And sure, you know what? I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna end on that, but the main complaint that i've seen a lot of people talk about is the price point of uh, people have been comparing it to other indie games that might be better they're like oh it's a 25 dollar game if i'm gonna spend 25 dollars then i'm gonna get shovel knight instead or i'm gonna get hollow knight okay that that guess what that's called capitalism that's called free enterprise you're free to spend your money however you want and i'm gonna agree 25 dollars is pretty steep for a switch game that's only download only at all. It's very rare that I spend $25 on any Switch eShop game. But the beauty about it is, is that once in a while, Switch eShops, you know, has sales. Games go on sale and stuff. So nobody's twisting an arm to buy a game for $25. But I will say that if you're looking for a quirky platforming game that you have not played before, that just came out, that has, you know, elements of retro games and you know a challenge a degree of challenge then yeah sydney hunter is worth a look i think it's actually a really well-made game and i'm not saying that just because my friend is involved with the company i'm saying that because i like retro games i'm wearing a retro shirt i have a whole bunch of retro games out here like <laughs> Just because you like something doesn't necessarily mean that you're shilling for it. That's where people get the confusion at. But I will say it's kind of unfair to compare games by their price. Like, I could say, oh, well, if I'm going to spend five bucks, I'd rather buy a better five dollar game. Like, you can't really say that. That's like going to McDonald's and Burger King and comparing. Like, yeah, it's both a burger or it's both a game. But it, honestly, it just depends on what you like and video games are subjective honestly like what i like you might not like and what you like i might not like so sure you can go and get something else for a different price point or whatever but it doesn't mean that the game is not worth checking out i honestly had a lot of fun and i've been following this game since day one so i personally like it if you don't want to spend 25 dollars wait for it to go on sale or don't get it at all free enterprise capitalism imagine that Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for today's video. But in all honesty, if if your game being priced too high is the only complaint people are saying about it, then that's not a bad thing at all. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see. Consider supporting 8-Bit Eric on Patreon for just a dollar a month. Link below in the description. You want to become part of the hashtag 8BE Nation, guys? Well, be sure to pick up your official merch now available online. Link is below in the description. We got classic t-shirts, tank tops, hoodies, and even women's apparel. Don't forget, pick up your official merch now. 
And while you're at it guys, feel free to watch the next video or why don't you catch up on one that you might have previously missed. Thanks again guys for all the support. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are amazing and don't forget to subscribe and click that like button if you are brand new. Thanks again guys. Peace out.